a smaller S band antennas in addition to the existing L band antennas. But the most uh, important thing today, and it's the only thing which is available in the country, in the, in the world, is that uh, Indian AVAC system, of course, ELTA and uh, uh, Russians have jointly done that. Uh, that system has got all the parameters and all, as well as truly 360 degrees, you can see it. Obviously, they have put uh, three antennas, as in this case, a triangular form, each one covering 120 degrees. Instead of having uh, two of them side by side, we have got in a triangular fashion, uh, 360 degrees uh, you have, and thereby this is the only system available. When it came to us, we have been asked to uh, uh, do an electronically scanned system. Ob obviously, we have started our career on the AWNC or AVAX with a mechanically scanning system with Avro, and you all aware of that, uh, what the flight we went through. At the end of it, that we have been asked to go along with Embraer aircraft, so then we decided similarly a uh, two-phase electronic scanning system that means we will be able to get 100 and, uh, 240 degrees with 120 degrees on either side. Now, the EMB uh, platform is uh, finalized from the Air Force side of it, so we have to do our maximization in terms of what all the system that we can put in. We have to have uh, both primary as well as the secondary surveillance radar. The antenna part of it we have put, fitted onto the top in the dorsal, where the primary radar is in the top, secondary surveillance radar is in the radar antenna is in the bottom. And we have to have uh, SATCOM as well as C-band data link. We also have to have uh, refueling. The reason being that in case the endurance is less and in, ca in case of uh, operations where we would like to have a longer endurance, we can extend it by refueling the aircraft. And similar to that, we have got ECM, e ESM, CSM, as well as uh, data link through voice, uh, voice, uh, voice communication with the VHF, UHF, and mission system controller and other units. We also got dual auxiliary power unit. In the event of failure of one, we can manage to survey with the second alone with a slightly reduced power. Obviously, such a costly system when it is flying, we must have self-protection suit in terms of protecting it from other uh, <coughs> missiles. In general, if you look at the evolution of uh, any design norms, there is no fixer. Basically, it is, uh, starts with the perception of each country, they, their military perceptions. So basically, you sit in the driving seat, and accordingly, we need to uh, make our systems. So all said and done, in any case, there are only major three varieties are there. One is that we can go for a circular dish on the top and have a complete 360 degrees, and which, which has got its own merits and demerits. Alternatively, we can have a system which is, uh, which is smallest, like ours, where you can have an antenna on either side and then be done with that and be happy with the 240 degrees. But otherwise, functionally, it is exactly the same as the other systems. Alternatively, we can probably add a front and back systems and then try and get the complete coverage. The other question what was asked before we started our system is whether we should go for L-band or S-band. This debate can always be continued forever, but notwithstanding that, you will understand somewhere or the other, we all can achieve in between 300 to 400 kilometers irrespective of the water band we are using. And notwithstanding that, we can always say that there are some advantage in terms of well band, like for instance better RCS and maybe in terms of uh, better devices to produce some more power, but this is no longer an issue. Even in the S-band, we can get fairly good amount of power to achieve that uh, ranges of our interest. But S-band has got on the other hand, definitely smaller and compact, relatively likely to be lightweight, and provides high definition because the beamits are going to be smaller for the given aperture. And also, what you can have is, S-band have got slightly lesser complications in terms of working in congestion with IFF or TCAS because they are also operating in the same L-band. And in addition to that, the spectrum in the communication is going up and up. Probably it will catch up soon, and definitely in the case of L-band, we do talk about communication band coming up to L-band also. And all... In addition to that, uh, in the case of sea surveillance, S-band being a smaller, a shorter uh, wavelength, it gives you better in terms of clutter performance. Last but not the least, it is uh, proven and it is available and it has been used for quite some time, more than a decade. Now, the other point is that there is a myth always that 360 degrees is uh, necessary or not necessary in terms of azimuth. Look, in, in terms of uh, profile or scenario, nobody is going to continuously fly uh, in one side to the other side, looking in all the directions, see a uh, threat always. In general, it is expected to be in some direction which is well known, and always we have to have a scenario which is about 100 to 200 kilometers of straight run and return back 180 degrees and then come back 
And this is type of this type of loitering is very very common in all over the world. If such a case, whether you go for a 360 degrees or a, a, a limit to 240 degrees, you will have a blank period when you are taking a turn. It could be probably minimized in the case of 360 degrees, but not eliminated. But similar to that, you can also have elevation scanning. Elevation scanning, whether it is needed or not, again a debate. In general, when you are talking about a slow, very steady uh, flight, you may not have much of uh, you know roll and pitch. So consequently, you may or may not have to have a sort of a, a electronic scanning itself in elevation. But if you are talking about a good turn, I mean, sort of a more uh, uh, turbulent con conditions also, we would like to stabilize the beam electronically. You sure need to have electronic, uh, stabil electronic stabilization or electronic scanning in elevation. Incidentally, it helps you to reduce or minimize your, uh, uh, perform minimize your non-availability of the targets during the turn performance. Similar to that, there is always a question mark and debate. This is all we talked uh, discussed and elaborately, uh, you know, uh, uh, minuted in our minutes, that which is a better, be best approach in terms of putting the antenna on top or, or on the sides, which is a better. One always could argue saying that the TR modules, if you are going to keep it inside your aircraft, uh, that is inside the fuselage, where you are having several systems compactly packed, that you will have a more EMAMC problem. Also the heat generator. But obviously, the uh, uh, one thing that we cannot be denied, wherever you generate the power, the total ASA has started with the concept the antenna has to have very closely the transmitting amplifiers. But now in this case, we are again going to keep somewhere else and then maybe using the loss. But notwithstanding that, it has got several other advantages. One is that the heat generated from the modules need to become, uh, must be cooled and it could be always be done very effectively by various means, including water cooling and so many other cooling. But then, the load outside becomes much smaller in the case of a compact and side looking antennas, whereas if you are going to put the total TR modules outside the aircraft, that weight has to be compensated to have a flight quality. But that's also been done and it is uh, flying. As a matter of fact, if you ask the Brazilian IAF pilots, they always say that they don't see the difference between with or without the top uh, antenna on top. And not but not the least is, that you have some amount of space constraint because inside the aircraft you will land up uh, occupying with your own tier modules and so naturally